Welcome to the Get Fit Guy's quick and dirty tips to get moving and shape up. My name is Brock Armstrong, and I'm the Get Fit Guy. In past episodes of the Get Fit Guy podcast, I've talked about how movement and exercise can have a direct effect on our mental health. And my guest on today's episode is a bit of an expert in that area, and I can't wait to hear what he has to share with us today. But first, a little bit of introduction. Back in 1998, today's guest, Dr. J.P. Paolo Fry, co-founded the Institute for Human Health and Potential, or the IHHP, as a research-based training company to help create leaders and transform organizations. J.P. is also a New York Times bestselling author who works with Olympians, NFL teams, Navy SEALs, and also a who's who of Fortune 500s to help them thrive in the midst of change. Now, recently, JP started the Last 8% Morning Project to found a community where he could help people deal with their most difficult decisions during the COVID-19 outbreak. Now, this community helps listeners engage with other community members to realize that they're not alone in the challenges that they face in this uncertain time. Now, I listened to a few of JP's episodes, and I really identified with his outlook on movement and on mental health, and I'm excited to have him here today on the Get Fit Guy podcast to share some of that info with you all. So, JP, welcome to the Get Fit Guy podcast. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure to be here, Brock. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. I can't wait to uh, to pick your brain. But to start off, I'm sure the listeners are wondering from the intro that I just gave you, what is the last 8%? Like, why have you created a whole podcast and project around only 8% instead of the other 92%? Yeah, that's a great question. So it is the last 8% moment is a moment or situation that is more difficult than the usual ones we face in the course of a day, a week, a month, or in COVID-19's case, a lifetime. These are situations where we struggle. And so mm -hmm. it came out of work we did you know, at our organization, we survey 40,000 people a month, and it came out of our research where we're pretty good at 85, 90, 92 percent of most of the situations we face with. And if I bring it to conversations, let's say, you know, Brock, you and I are having a conversation. Let's say it's a feedback conversation. I'm pretty good at you know giving you feedback or having a conversation with you up to about 85, 90, 92 percent. But when I get to that last eight percent, the hard stuff, the mm -hmm. hardest part of the conversation you start to you start to see where the conversation is going. You're not pleased about that. You're starting to get a bit triggered and emotional. And then you infect me with your emotion. And then as opposed to approaching that last 8%, I avoid that last 8%. And so that's where the research came from. And, but we've also found that it's not just last 8% conversations that we avoid. It's also last 8% decisions. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the research came from. And then we thought, hey, you know, the reason people struggle with that last 8% is a lack of emotional intelligence. Emotions get in the way. And so, what, in fact, what we know is that we fall into, and as listeners are listening, I want you to think about a last 8% situation, conversation, or decision you're facing. What we know is that each of us fall into what's known as a predictable default behavior. That is, we either get a bit anxious, fearful, we want to be perfect, and we avoid. So the first one is we avoid. Or the second one is we get a bit frustrated or angry and we make a mess. So we either avoid or make a mess. Those are the two predictable default behaviors. So that's the challenge. And it's really about managing emotions in order to step in and have those last 8% conversations, decisions, or any situation. So the podcast, The Last 8% Morning, is all about how can we systematically bit by bit, build emotional intelligence so we can be better in those most challenging moments. That is really fascinating. There's actually a theory, not to totally go off on my own little rant here, I, I hate to do that when I have such an interesting guest, but this ties in really well. There's a theory called the central governor theory, and it applies to like training and racing where the last not necessarily exactly 8%, but are somewhere around there in a race or in a workout, a really hard workout, to say you're lifting weights or you're doing sprints or something, that's when your body starts to tell you, okay, you, that's enough. You can stop now or you're putting yourself in danger. This is too hard. You're going to overheat or you're going to, you're going to bonk or whatever. And our, our brain starts to shut our body down. So it sounds like this extends into all realms of life. 
It really does. It really does. And what's interesting is that most people aren't even aware of it. And yet we get, we get frustrated because we avoid it, we make a mess, and then our relationships aren't as solid or as functioning as well as we'd like them to be. That is fascinating stuff. Really cool. But we could spend the whole time talking about this, but I promised the audience that we would get into the whole mental health aspect of movement and exercise. So in one of the episodes I listened to of the last 8% podcast, you talked about the importance of movement. Now, yes. can you outline what you sort of believe in and what you what you highlighted in that episodes and why you think we humans need movement in our day? Sure. Here's the thing. As opposed to wake up and look at your phone, which only spikes cortisol, not good for our health, right? What we want to do is suggest you get up and you go for a walk. So the the actual podcast integrates movement, going for a walk, mindfulness, and mental training exercises. And so we say go for a 15 to 20 minute walk because what we know is if you do a moderate walk at 15 to 20 minutes, you start to get some of the effects of myokines. Now, Mm -hmm. myokines are essentially proteins. They're pre-proteins, but they're proteins that get spit out by your muscles when you exercise into your bloodstream. And because of their particular size and shape, they can cross the blood-brain barrier and they go to work on your brain and they literally help your brain be better in three specific ways. They work with a few other chemicals, but these are really specific to myokines, three specific things. Number one, they make you more stress resilient. They, they affect mm-hmm. your the neural pathways in your brain and you become more stress resilient. Number one. Number two, you actually enjoy moments more from the myokine effect. So you're actually, the pleasure centers get lit up. So you actually enjoy your moments more. And I think we've all had that after we exercise, we kind of feel kind of some different experience that's more pleasurable. So we can experience pleasure more. So number one, stress resilient. Number two, more pleasurable. But number three, we actually feel more trusting of others which helps us collaborate more, helps us build better relationships. We give people the benefit of the doubt. And so those three specifics come from the fact that we walk for 15 or 20 minutes, you know, and and you probably know this, Brock, but you know, the biggest part, biggest muscle we have is our, our quadriceps muscle. So we think of it as an internal pharmacy of the thigh. That's what we sometimes (laughs) joke around that, you know, spits out, you know, so you can, you can turn on your pharmacy. And so as opposed to some taking some of the you know, the drugs that we all take to make ourselves feel better, turn on the drugs that come from inside of you. I love that. The internal pharmacy of the thigh. (laughs) (laughs) IPT. There you go. I love it. And it sounds like, and this is something that I bring up a lot on the Get Fit Guy podcast, the idea that you know, you don't have to join a CrossFit gym. You don't have to sign up for anything crazy. Just going for a walk can give you all of these benefits. How long did you say? 15 or 20 minutes? Yeah, 15 to 20 minutes of moderate. So you can't just lollygag. You got to go walk at a, you know, a decent, not a fast, fast pace, but a moderate pace. But here's the thing. I think you hit on something really important for anyone listening. You don't have to do crazy amounts of high intensity workouts. Now, having said that, by the way, I walk a lot and I also mm-hmm. do hit workouts, you know, high intensity interval training workouts. So I still do that. But it's not the only thing I do and they work on different energy systems. So the point is yeah. if you just did 15 or 20 minutes of walking a day. That would be a fantastic thing. And of course the other piece in all this is we're walking. So there's movement, but we're also helping you build a mindfulness practice. A lot of people have trouble sitting and meditating or sitting and doing mindfulness. We actually build it into the walking and people love that. And then the final piece is like literally, and you know, this, we drop an idea every podcast so people are growing their learning around how to build their emotional intelligence how to be courageous how to be bold because we don't want to kind of end this life feeling some regret like we didn't take our chances like we played small and so we're really there to help you we're here to help there to guide you to kind of take on your biggest challenges your last eight percent and use those last eight percent to transform yourself into the person you want to become So it sounds like the the podcast itself, if you're doing this in the morning and you're actually listening to it while you're going for a walk, it's really a moving meditation that you're it sort is. of That's it, diving into. That's a great way to think about it. So, you know, people struggle with meditation, but they know it's helpful. So in fact, one of the ideas of the day, I talk about the value of doing mindfulness for the brain, but people struggle. So this is like movement-based mindfulness or movement-based me- meditation. Absolutely. 
So could you explain to the to the listeners right now how they could actually like tomorrow morning, let's say, get up and do a moving meditation? Yeah, what yeah. do you need to do to have that happen? Uh, we follow a BIG structure. So, you know, get up, make your bed. So that's the first B. Second B is get up and just put your shoes on, go for a walk, 15, 20 minutes. And the next B is be mindful of your belly and your body. Then we have one of two I's and one of two G's to fill out the BIG acronym. So one of the I's is ID of the day or strengthening identity, a big thing we do with Olympic athletes, NBA, NFL teams. So one of the I's and then one of the G's and we pick it different every session. It's either gratitude or goals. But the idea is that just get up in the morning, don't look at your phone, put your shoes on, put me in your ear because it's actually my morning routine. I'm walking along with you. Like it's actually pretty simple. Just get up and go for a walk and put me in your, uh, you, you know, the earphones in your ear and that's all you have to do. And, and just let the rest take care of itself. It sounds like even if you're not a podcast listener, which would be crazy if you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> but if you happen to not want to do that, you could go out, like get up, make your bed, put your shoes on, go for a walk and and think about things that you're grateful for in that, that's like it. maybe from the day before or something like that's that. It, and, yeah. Let, let me just say this because my son, my 17 year old son said, dad, you've got this totally wrong in its branding. It shouldn't be called <laughs> the last 8% morning because what we're finding, our users are using it at all times of the day, some at lunch, some after work. In fact, this is interesting because we're working from home so much. Some people are getting up, doing their morning, whatever their morning is, eating, showering. And before they start work, they do this 15-minute walk. And that becomes the buffer or the bridge between personal and work. So they come back to work at the house after doing the podcast. And then they finish work. And they do this opposite, same thing, but in the opposite order. They go and do another 15-minute you know, morning routine, even though it's called morning. And when they come back, they don't think about work. So it's a way to create a bit of structure because it's hard right now with COVID-19. This is hard. And so, you know, if you're struggling with working at home, if you're feeling stressed, this might be the best antidote. That sounds like a great antidote. We need some sort of routine to split up the day and to to really signal to ourselves that work is over. Now it's time to relax. And this time is yours. That's exactly it. Okay, so we talked about the benefit of movement, but I know I've heard you talk about the sort of deleterious effects of of the sedentariness that that life has brought, especially during COVID nineteen, but really just any time in the in the recent past. And you talked about a thing called the default mode. Network. Yeah, yeah. Could you explain that? Yeah. Well, here's the thing: is that so? Like for any of us, if we're kind of if, when our brain is idle, when we when our brain is left to its own devices. We're not working. We're not really doing any, you know, activity. We're just kind of, you know, idle. Our brain, actually, the posterior part of our brain gets turned on. That's called the DMN, default mode network. And what it does, it's engaged in three activities. It ruminates about the past, so something that didn't go well. It worries about the future, something that's to come. Hmm. Or it gets engaged in social comparison. And all yeah. three of those things just cause us stress, cause us anxiety. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the reasons why, again, you want to get out and walk, we get this is incredible research. Even just going outside and standing in a forest literally turns off your DMN, which sounds crazy, but it's true. So that's why we say go for a walk, go for a walk in a forest or a grass area if you can, because that's going to, again, help your brain be at its best. So it sounds like if we catch ourselves, if we're sitting around, if we're, we think we're relaxing and having a nice time and we catch ourselves having those thoughts of comparing ourselves to people on social media or start to have catastrophe thoughts about what's going to happen tomorrow at work or next week at the gym or whatever, that we should just get up and get out the door and go for a walk. Now, could we do this around our living room if we don't have the opportunity to go outside? Yeah. So you know what? That's so interesting you say that because for a time during COVID, my daughter, Bridget Palufry is the producer on the podcast. And she said, Dad, remember, there's some people who aren't able to move. So you might notice, Brock, in my instructions on the podcast, I say, move as you are able for exactly that reason. It's very sensitive that you kind of pick that up. So in fact, there are times when people walk in their houses and they literally put on the podcast and they walk back and forth, back and forth in their house. And they're getting movement. They may not be getting out into the you know green where it turns off the DMN, but just by doing mindfulness, you actually are turning off the DMN, by the way. So mm-hmm. it's you know kind of going to take care of that anyway. But um, but yeah, move as you are able. In fact, we have some listeners who go on 
a the ruin machine or an elliptical machine, and maybe there's other things they've been doing. I will say that some people have said, oh, I just listened to it from my desk. And I just say to them, don't listen then. Honestly, mm, the wow. whole design is to increase movement. And by the way, I love your podcast because you talk about all these important things, but we want to integrate movement into our day. And so this is an important way to do it. And don't listen to this while you're at your desk or you're in your <laughs> car. Listen to it too while you're moving. Well, that's a great place to wrap things up, but I can't let you go until you let everybody know where they can find the podcast, you, or the project, everything. Sure. So, you know, last 8% project, it's a Facebook group. So please come join us there, Last 8% Project. The podcast itself is called The Last 8% Morning. It's on any of the great you know, uh, platforms. You can LinkedIn with me. I accept LinkedIn friend requests or whatever, like LinkedIn requests, connection requests. Mm-hmm. You know, our website is I, as in India, H is in hotel, H is in hotel, P is in Peter. So IHHP.com. And you can learn all about our training our coaching, our assessments, the ones that we do with, as you said, you know, U.S. Army, Navy, NFL, NBA teams, Goldman Sachs and different folks in finance, healthcare, education. So, you know, we're pretty excited about the work we're doing. And, you know, we'd love for everyone who's listening to join us because we want to grow this community so we can all be a bit more courageous. So we don't leave this life thinking, you know, I didn't take my shots. You know, like that's the one thing I'll say this, and maybe I don't think I've said this so far, but you know, I've, I've been to six Olympic Games. There's nothing worse than leaving an Olympic Games feeling regret like you didn't take your shots. Mm-hmm. This podcast, yours is as well, but you know, our focus is to help people play big, take their shots so they don't leave this life with regret. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, JP, for coming on the Get Fit Guy podcast. It was really, really great to get your perspective on this stuff. Uh, My pleasure. Absolutely, Brock. And, uh, you know, keep up the great work you're doing. And I'll put links to all of that stuff in the show notes over at getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com. And you can find Dr. JP Paolo Fry in all those locations. So thanks for listening, everybody. 